as you can see, I am running Microsoft Word on Garda Linux. I can move the windows around. I can create a new document. And I can start typing. You can see it works normally, as if it was a Linux application. You might be wondering how I am doing this. No, I am not using Vine. No, I am not using Crossover. And no, I am not using the web app. I am using a piece of software called WinApps. WinApps runs the apps inside a Windows KVM and then uses RDP to display the application on a desktop. If you didn't understand anything I just said, that's fine. I'm going to explain everything in detail. If you're not interested in how it works, you can just skip ahead to the installation process. So how does this work? It basically works using two apps, a Windows KVM and the remote desktop protocol. So first, what is a KVM? The full form of KVM is Kernel Based Virtual Machine. It is an open source virtualization technology built into Linux. It lets you turn Linux into a hypervisor that allows a host machine to run multiple isolated virtual environments. In simpler words, when you have a PC, you run an operating system on it and takes all the resources of the hardware. So if it has 8GB RAM, the OS will use all 8GB of RAM. But what if we can divide the RAM and split it between different operating systems? So we could run Windows, Linux and Mac OS side by side and give them each 2GB of RAM. We are doing something similar here. We run a Windows VM inside Linux and run the apps inside the VM. And then we display the applications that are running using the remote desktop protocol. Ok, so now you know what is a KVM. So let's talk about the remote desktop protocol. It's a proprietary protocol developed by Microsoft which provides a user with a graphical interface to connect to another computer over a network connection. If you are a Raspberry Pi user, it is something similar to VNC server where we can view our Raspberry Pi from other devices and control it. So here, instead of seeing the whole desktop, we just see the application and we can interact with it. Now that we have a basic idea of how it works, let's get started. So first, as I explained, we are going to be creating a virtual machine. For that, we are going to be using Virtual Machine Manager. Before setting up the virtual machine, we will need to do some configuration and install some dependencies. I have written down all the commands here. So if you are using Debian, you just need to install two dependencies and you can download the GitHub repo. But if you are using Arch Linux like me, you will need to do some extra configuration. So let me just open the terminal. You can copy all these commands at once, but I'm just going to copy one by them so I can tell you what each one does. So the first one installs the dependencies, the pacman command. So just select it, I click, copy and paste. Give your password. And just over here too. Then we're going to be editing the configuration files. So we are adding these two lines to the libvirtd.conf and then we are creating a libvirt configuration in the user directory. So you can just copy them again and paste them and that's done. Then we need to create a group called libvirt and add the user to that. So just select this, right click, copy and paste it and click enter and then we will download the WinApps github repo so we can just use this command so just copy it and paste it here and click enter and that's it that's all the configuration we need to do now let's start setting up the virtual machine now that we are done with installing dependencies and editing the configuration files we can start setting up the virtual machine for that we are going to need two files, go to the WinApps GitHub repo, I will leave a link for it in the description, then scroll down here until you find creating a virtual machine in KVM guide here, click on it and again scroll down here where you will find these two links, the first one is the Windows 10 ISO, so just right click this and click open link in your tab. 
I will take you to this Microsoft website here. Here scroll down and click select edition and choose Windows 10 and click confirm. And then select the product language. I'm going to select it as English and click on confirm. Click on the 64 bit download and click save file and click OK. I can see it's downloading it for me now. While that's downloading, again go back to the WinApps guide here. I need to install the KVM Word IO drivers. So just click on this link here and it will download it. So again just click save file and click OK. And it will download these two files. So as you can see, the files have finished downloading. So now just minimize the browser and we can start creating the virtual machine. So open the applications menu and search for virtual machine manager. You can see it's right here. Click on it. This will launch the virtual, virtual machine manager window. First click on edit here and click on preferences and make sure to check enable XML editing here. Make sure it's like looks like this. Then click close. Then click on the button in the corner here when you hover over it and says create a new virtual machine. Click on that. And then it will ask us how you'd like to install the operating system. Choose local install media here and click forward. Then we need to select the ISO. Here click on browse and click on browse local. And here you need to navigate to the Windows 10 ISO you download. So just choose this and click open. Make sure to check automatically detect from installation media slash source here. Then click forward. And now you choose the memory and CPU settings. So the default memory is 4 GB and CPU is 2. 4 GB of memory won't be always used as we'll be installing a memory ballooning service which will make sure to give the 4 GB RAM if the VM really needs it or else it won't be using the whole RAM. You can leave these as default. If you have less RAM you can reduce this if you want. Then click forward. Now we create a virtual disk for the virtual machine. So we need to specify the size of the disk here. So the Default is 40 GB and that's enough, but if you want you can increase it. This won't be using all the 40 GB at all the time, meaning if I create a 40 GB disk right now here, there won't be 40 GB missing from my Linux installation. It will just be that the virtual machine will use up any space it needs and it won't uh, increase more than 40 GB. So you can still use the rest of the space. Then click forward and now here, Make sure the name is RDP Windows. This is very important or else it won't work as WinApps won't be able to detect the virtual machine. So make sure RDP W are capital and Windows are lowercase. Then make sure to check customize configuration before install here. Just click this and then click finish. And now we need to configure some things so first click on cpu here and click on xml and here scroll down until you find the clock section here you can see there's a part which says clock and here the slash clock that's where the section ends so just select this and delete this then open the guide again and scroll down until you find this text here which is clock and slash clock you can click on the clipboard button on the side here which will copy the text then again in the virtual machine manager paste that text here and make sure the indentation is correct meaning the space is here so you can see there's a little space here and you need to add that here so just add those spaces Make sure they're aligned with how everything looks here. So just 
two spaces here this space is here and this is here so you can see everything is aligned properly now so then click apply and then click on memory and click on memory and go to details and here set the current allocation to 1024 which is 1 GB of RAM so this is the minimum amount of RAM the VM will be using and click apply then click on boot options and here enable start to virtual machine on host boot up you do this so that you don't need to start the virtual machine manually every time if you have less RAM I won't recommend doing this as it will be running in the background and be using up some RAM so if you have 4 GB of RAM or something less than that you might not want to do this then click on SATA disk 1 here and you need to remember to click apply also you get this dialog box so just click yes last click you want to apply the changes so click on SATA disk and change the disk bus by clicking on this drop down arrow here and changing it to word IO and click apply then click on NIC and again change the device model by clicking on the drop down arrow here and changing it to word IO and click apply again then click on the add hardware on the bottom here and choose storage here and then click select or create custom storage click manage here click browse local and here navigate to the virtual machine drivers we had installed so you can see the word IO drivers is here so just click on it and click open and make sure the device type is CD-ROM if you don't know what we're doing here in the olden days when we want to install some software we would get them in the form of a CD and we had to in insert the CD into the computer and then the CD will have all the files we need to install the software this is basically something similar to that we are mounting the CD into the virtual machine once you have done that click finish and that's all the configuration we need to do now just click on begin installation you can see the windows logo here meaning the virtual machine is booting and you can see it takes us to the windows installer so here just choose your language your uh, time and currency and keyboard then click next here click on install now and now it will ask you to activate windows you can just click i don't have a product key now here it's very important to choose windows 10 pro or else it won't work and to choose windows 10 pro as that's the only edition which comes with rdp or remote desktop protocol which we will be needing to use WinApps so choose Windows 10 Pro and click next now it will ask you to accept to the license terms so just click I accept and click next now here click custom install and here you won't be able to see the virtual disk we created first to fix that click on load driver click OK and here choose the driver which says W10 here so slash AMD64 slash W10 choose that one and click next and now you can see it shows us the 40 GB virtual drive we had created before so just click on it and click next and now the windows installation will begin so this will take, this will take a while so once the installation is over the VM will reboot once or twice and take you to the windows setup screen so you can see it's loading for me right now and you can see it has set up the windows virtual machine now so first choose your country once you have chosen the country click on yes choose your keyboard layout and click yes then just click skip if it asks you to 
add a second keyboard layout and now it will ask you to connect to a network but it won't show anything so just click i don't have the internet we will this is because we didn't install the drivers we will fix this later so just click i don't have internet now it will ask you to create a user or you can name it anything you want but make sure remember it as we going to need it later i'm just going to name it tutorial and click next I'll ask you to create a password and just going to click tutorial again and you will also need the password later so remember it so tutorial then click next again type the password and click next I'll ask you some security questions just put them random Now I'll choose the privacy settings. You can just disable everything. You click accept. Now I'll ask you to set up Cortana. Just click not now. Now it will set up the virtual windows. So just wait for a little bit. And you can see we are in the Windows desktop now. Let me just see if I can change the resolution. Yeah, that's better. Now open the file manager. You can see it's right here on the bottom. Click on it. So now we have to install the drivers. So then click on this PC. And you'll remember we had mounted the Word IO drivers as a CD before. So just click on it. Here scroll down until you find what I open GTX64. Click on it. That will start the installer. So just click next. Click I accept the terms of the license agreement and click next. Now you can see it's showing you all what is what all is going to install. Leave everything as default. You can see it's installing the memory balance service I told you about. And I can install some other drivers and everything required. So just click next and click install. Just click yes here. Click install. So you can just click finish now and close the file manager then we need to edit the registry a little bit so you can just we need to install a dot reg file to edit it so just open the browser and search for win apps and click enter you will find the github link for win apps just click on it and now here go into the install folder here and click on rtp apps.reg you can see it opens this file here then click on the raw button here ctrl a and ctrl c to copy all the text here then open notepad from search just open notepad here and paste all the text then click file and click save and then just go to desktop anywhere you want and save it as install dot reg make sure it's dot reg and click save and then open the file explorer again and go to where you save the file and then you can see the install we just created so just click on it right click it and click merge and ask you if you want to allow this app just click yes and again just click yes 
and see it has added successfully and click OK. Then you can close all these windows. Now we need to enable RDP and change the device name. So click on the windows icon here and click on settings. Here search for about your PC. Here click rename this PC and rename it to RDP Windows. Again, make sure the name is exactly the same or else it won't work. WinApps needs this name for it to work. So it's uh, uppercase for RDPW and it's lowercase for Windows. And then click next. You can click restart later. We'll restart later. We'll do one more thing now. And here scroll down and you'll find remote desktop just above about. Click on it and click enable here last few enable click confirm and that's it you have enabled remote desktop now so you can just close this window now and now you can install any applications you want but I'm going to do it later now just click on the windows icon again click on the power icon here and click on restart Yeah, so here don't don't log in, just minimize it and close the window. You can just minimize this. Then again open the commands file here. And here you'll find the after creating VM section. So here we need to first create a WinApps config directory and then we need to create a winapps.com file. So here you need we'll have three lines rdp user rdp password and multimon you multimon is just for me as i'm using two monitors but if you're using one monitor you can just remove this line but here in rdp user and rdp pass you do put the username and password you have created for the windows vm so i had used the tutorial username and tutorial password so i just kept them like this here and then you just copy these commands open a terminal and paste them in that and click enter and you have created the WinApps configuration file now then just just yeah then we need to go inside the WinApps directory so just run cd WinApps and then run bin slash winapps space check and click enter let's start rdp and try to connect to the virtual machine we created you can see it opens up the file manager meaning it has connected to the virtual machine so this is a file explorer in windows so you can see you are able to use a windows applications in linux right now so that's pretty cool you can just close this up you might get a screen which says connected to tutorial user or something like that but you can just ignore that so this means it has connected to rdp window successfully so i can just close this then we need to run dot slash installer dot sh and click enter now it will ask you for an install for the current user of the whole system i'm going to choose user you can choose anything you want that will open a command prompt window and start searching for the apps. Now it will ask you if you want to set up all detected pre-configured apps. Just click enter. And now you can see it has detected some apps, the default apps in Windows. So just click set up all detected applications. And now you can see it has shows us all the applications which are detected. So if I open the applications menu and search for Explorer here and click on this and you can see the file explorer from windows launches in the linux that's pretty cool right let's see if we can launch any other application let's try launching microsoft edge and you can see we have microsoft edge here this is the windows version running in linux 
so that's pretty cool you can do it for whatever use in reason you want to do it not sure why you don't do it but why not so you can see i can just search for any website here so i can just go to office or so i'm just going to close this now okay so i am back in the windows vm and i have installed the office application so i have installed word powerpoint excel and all that so i can just launch it here to show you it works in the windows vm so you can see word launches it's word this is word 2019 so i can just close this now and then just reboot the machine after installing the applications so just click the power menu and click restart click restart anyway the machine has finished rebooting so i can just close this close this and now open the terminal again and go into the winamps directory again and run dot slash installer dot sh and click enter and again just choose user now it will again check for the installed apps so this time we had installed the office applications so it should detect them now so just give me this let me just click yes and it's opening the command prompt here it's just a glitch you can see it has detected the app so just click set up all detected pre-configured applications and you can see now it has detected powerpoint onenote excel and word so i'll just again click set up all detected applications and you can see it says installation complete so now if i open the applications menu and search for word and click on this wait for a few seconds and you can see word launches you can see i am i am using a windows application inside of linux so you can see this is the world i can just open a new document so i can just right i can just type normally so i'm just typing normally here I can change the heading, I can format the text, text, I can make it big, I can do everything normally, I can change everything, so you can see everything in Word is working fine, if you want you can even sign in here, you can sign into your account and you'll be able to access your OneDrive files here, everything works, you can just set it up as if, you're, it, as if it was running in Windows, you can even tie it to the side, so I can just tile it like this you see it ties to the side you even get the yeah so you can see it's full screen now it's working yeah so you can see it goes above the panel well, for some reason so you can see i can just move it around it has the wobbly window effect in Garda linux so you can see i can just move it everything is working fine and if you see this white border on it means says the window is minimized i can just click this and the border will disappear you can see i'm running the application let me try opening excel so i can just search for excel you can see excel here so i can just click on it and now you can see even excel launched so i can just pin excel to the side and I can pin word to the other side yeah so now I could just create a new workbook and you can see it's working pretty good okay. you can see I can just edit anything you want anything I want here I can just copy the text from here right click copy and then I can paste it in here I can just click on paste and you can see sub to rpi code appears so you can see it's a little bit slow but it gets the job done you won't have much problem using it if you're using one application you won't have much problem and yeah that's pretty much it thanks for watching and don't forget to check out my other videos